Home buyers will find move-in ready homes with nice floor plans, soaring ceilings, crown molding, and attractive fireplaces. Modern kitchens highlight granite countertops, stainless steel appliance, and custom cabinets. Who wrote that? <laughs> Welcome to Real Siblings, It Ain't Easy, a real estate podcast with the goal to educate, inform, and save their listeners time as they navigate the market and properties in their neighborhoods. Get ready to join real-life siblings and professional real estate advisors, Donna Reed and Eric Seaman, as they discuss how it may be simple, but it ain't always easy. Every time I think about the places I have known, I realize that times have changed. So I'll do what I can to make this house into a home yeah yeah oh. hi everyone and welcome to real siblings it ain't easy i'm eric seaman realtor with keller williams heritage in san antonio texas and i am here with my sister i am donna reed and i'm with keller williams southern arizona in tucson arizona this is not your typical real estate podcast and we are not your run-of-the-mill hosts where we live, how we live, and what type of property you call home reflects your life, livelihood, and your lifestyle. Donna and I work to blend lifestyle together with real estate to entertain and inform our listeners. Together, we grew up in the village of Lindsay, Ohio in the 50s to the 1970s. In the 1980s, Donna got married, returned, and raised her family. The combination of our idyllic lifestyle together with memorable homes irrevocably impacted our lives and careers in real estate in the Southwest states where we now reside. We have recognized that the properties are only a portion of the equation and that the balance is comprised of our life and upbringing in the farming town. We hope we will be successful in providing you expert knowledge of our markets while we share some history, statistics, or simply information about the real estate industry you may not be familiar with. Now, we have spent the last several episodes focusing on lifestyle. And today we swing that pendulum back and talk about the physical characteristics of a property. Some would argue it's about the most important room in the house. You may have heard or seen a sign that reads or says something like, no matter where I serve my guest, it seems they like my kitchen best. That's right. So if you're watching this, you're going to see that Eric has, believe it or not, it says Youngstown Kitchens behind him, lean back by Mullins, all right? And there's a story to that. And the picture behind me, I actually posted on Facebook yesterday because apparently it was Siblings Day. So it's a picture of my kids in Lindsay in the house that we lived in after we moved back and I was married. So it's got my kids being silly as little ones and Caleb's got something wonky in his mouth. I don't know what it is. <laughs> something uh, wonky. Wonky. It was but, a delicious but, breakfast item i'm sure i know i know i just am like what is he doing you know and in today's world we would have taken a picture and then i would have edited it <laughs> stop the fact that we didn't do that but the reason we went ahead and put it up there is because dad built this kitchen for me and you know what i hadn't noticed look at the phone on the wall back there oh huh? my goodness there's a throwback <laughs> well i'm looking at the rights crispy box you can't I find that, that that's a collector's item you know yeah. you see these things for all the movie <laughs> themes that everything's a collector's item now and and there's one the box, in the picture. Do you think that was a camera? Somebody got a camera? Like the box looks like, a, I don't know. I don't know. There's a roll of film sitting in front of. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that box is. Grant. But the, the point is because I just got a new kitchen here in Tucson. I've lived in this house about 10 years and thinking about the house back there. So when we moved in, the people that had lived there prior were much shorter than we are. I am about almost 5'10". So dad built us this kitchen. And what I remember specifically was that he made it so that there were wedges on the wall and you hung the cabinets onto the wedges. I don't know if you knew that, Eric. What yeah. you see above the sink is the pretty little decoration, you know, underneath the window. And then the way that now a lot of people have glass in cabinets, that's kind of the, what do you call bubble, bubble glass? Bubble glass or bubble glass or something yeah. that... Well, this was actually a plastic. This was not glass, but I had forgotten that I even had those. And then it looks like I had a butcher block countertop. I can't remember that either. And a backsplash of sorts, which I think was the same as the floor tile. I think I, it's the it's the linoleum or the floor yeah. tile that you carried up out of the wall. Dad was yeah. good at that because we did the same thing at the house on Lynn Street. Yeah. The wallpaper and, matched the flooring. Right, right. And since I 
since I've just been working on my kitchen here in Tucson and I still don't have a backsplash, I literally looked at this picture to see if it looked straight. Like, I'm like, yep, that looks pretty straight because nothing in this home seems straight since we started the process. And the backsplash that I chose, right now, subway tiles popular everywhere, right? You know, the kind of yep. the square. And I chose something that's more arabesque, that's different colored because my cabinets themselves are pretty neutral. I'm sorry, more what? Arabesque. Isn't that a ballet term, an arabesque? It is. It is. So we can go either way. It's a, it's a ballet shaped wall piece, but... Very. Oh, clear as mud. <laughs> yeah, clear as mud. Bottom line is, it's not square. As I was talking to the man that's going to install it, I said, so do we have to take it all the way up to the cabinets or do we fill in with grout? He walked into the other room there and then he looked over and he said, you need to take it up as high as somebody will see it standing over here. And because it's a weird shape, it's going to be harder to put together. And then we talked about the wet saw and do you have to do that? And could we fill it in with grout? Could we put a piece of wood? So it's been, it's been quite a process. And I started, I paid my first $5,000 in July of 2022. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now, now hold on there. I want to, I want to yeah. read you something that I found. Now, how okay. do you pronounce your townhome community? Las Quintas. Las, Las Quintas Towns Home is a charming townhome community located in North Tucson, offering a collection of stunning residences ranging from 1,000 to over 1,600 square feet. The townhome provides low maintenance lifestyle in an ideal location. The properties date back to the 1970s and most are updated, showcasing modern kitchens, renovated bathrooms, and freshly painted interiors. Home buyers will find move-in ready homes with nice floor plans, soaring ceilings, crown molding, and attractive fireplaces. Modern kitchens highlight granite countertops, stainless steel appliance, and custom cabinets. Who wrote that? <laughs> okay. it's, it's a real estate website. That is, okay, that's a riot because I am... <laughs> I am just updating for the first time the kitchen that was put in in 1979. When I moved in, I wasn't sure. We had su some of these townhouses had sunken living rooms. I didn't use granite. I used like Corian solid surface. I'm just, I need to find that website and ask them if they've been in one of these lately. <laughs> here's, here's what is great about this community is they were really solidly built in the, and you've been here. They were well built. We have two car garages. We have front and back courtyards, all those things that I like. And I have a big kitchen that wasn't being well utilized. And now, now it is. Now that whole wall where the hutch the dead had made me sat, now I have cabinets there. And it's lovely. And one of these days, maybe maybe we'll put on the website or we'll put the picture of the new kitchen in when I get okay, the Okay, so you, you did say you went with a Corian? Or a quartz? Yeah, they, what did they you... call it they call it solid surface, but it's solid a surface. Okay, Corian. so you and went with I... the solid surface material rather than a natural stone, rather than a quartz or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Reasons you made that selection? Partially because I was putting a cool butcher block, a real nice wood, in between the transitional piece between the kitchen and the dining. But my house is only worth okay. I'm going to say only in Tucson. My house is worth about three hundred and twenty thousand. So it doesn't warrant a fifty thousand dollar kitchen. And I was told by many people that the Corian holds up just as well, and I don't have to worry about it. So um, I made partially a look and partially an economic decision. Okay. That. And, and that's important because you and I both work with investors who flip. Yep. yep. And there are certain areas where it's like, you're not going to put it, do not think you have to put in granite in order to sell this. That's because correct. this is not a granite neighborhood. It is right. yeah. amazing, but don't expect your return because yeah, a neighborhood not. where a house is only going to sell because there's neighborhoods in San Antonio where I pointed out to an investor just the other day going, it's stripped down. We do some basics in here, some what I would call builder basics. Don't do uh, the granite because your final price is only going to be around 180000 yeah. I just was having that conversation with someone about Steve's house because I have somebody looking at it and he lives a mile from me in a townhouse built right around the same time. Not the same builder, I don't think, but really similar in the... Because well, come on, you're in Tucson. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> built, built in the 70s. I have a vaulted ceiling. He doesn't, you know, those kind of things. But... He has literally the same butcher block laminate on his countertop that I had in that house in Lindsay. And 
not solid wood butcher block, just the laminate cut, because he didn't change that. Right. The, kitch the kitchen's massive. And the flipper are, that came in said, I might paint these cabinets, but there's no way on earth I would remove them and make them something different because nobody's going to build or buy or put in this much good storage. So we were we were having that discussion about what do you do, you know, in a, right. in a home super sturdy. Now, and then, know. okay, so keeping us moving along. Yeah, yeah. Stainless steel appliance. Did you make the transition and do stainless steel? I did not. I don't And like why not? I don't like stainless steel because it shows all the fingerprints and all that stuff. So I have white at world. I have white appliances and I like my white. I know. Oh my God. I like my white appliances. My stove top, my stove is newer. I'm in an all electric community. The, the stove isn't old. And I made a, a shelf for my microwave as compared to up above the oven. And the day may come when I get a new refrigerator and I have to get a new dishwasher but I'm, I'm going to stick with white. I'm putting my color into the backsplash and the photos of food from around the world that I'm going to post in that. Okay. Now, custom cabinets, because you did yeah. talk about the fact that that's the one thing that you did have to do because of the unique layout, pitches, yeah. roof, and everything else, right? Yeah, there was, you know, one side was 16 inches deep. Another area was 13 inches deep. And when it got towards the divide in the room, it was 11 inches deep. And the little things that have come up that the new cabinets, now there's like a finger width exposed underneath the cabinets that used to come to the floor tile. And I talked to somebody about grout in it and he said, nope, do caulk, it'll stick better, do it, you know, but, but I have these random little things because the house was crooked and they tell me every house is crooked. It I is. Know. I mean, think about the the building material. You have wood and wood wood is warped. We have seen yeah. the wood going in on framed houses that you can already see the warp in the wood, even though it's been sistered together or whatever else. Yeah. And despite the best sheet rockers who are really good at blending and mud and whatever, there, there's that curve to the wall. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about your house, but I know my house at night when there's no natural light and there's just light from a hallway, I can see every single joint down the wall where yeah. A four foot by eight foot sheet of there's the texturing yeah. is different enough. You can see you can see it in the ceiling that yeah. we know it's four foot by eight foot, but it's like and there's the joint and there's the joint. It's funny. I look up. I'm like, you know, but we use that weird, you know, finish over top out here that was never back in the Midwest. So I don't see it here, but I definitely seen it in some homes and somewhere you can tell if there's been a leak because you can actually see where that <laughs> little four by eight piece of. OK, wood. so depositing. June or July, you said of last year, you said? About, yeah, in July of last year. And originally they thought they'd have it done in October. And then the guy that's really in charge goes, there's no way it's going to be done in October. And I said, well, because I had been out of my house the year before because of the roof leak and the bathrooms being done. I said, I don't want it to be done during Thanksgiving or Christmas. I just want to be in my house. So then we pushed it to January and then it wasn't done in January. And then we pushed it to February and then I was having company. And so it became March install. And Okay. And so a lot of it was personal. It wasn't necessarily it was. supply issues. Yeah, no, it wasn't. They typically do a commercial stuff. I was a random client because I sold the home of the owner of the company. That is the reason they did a custom kitchen for me at what is a fairly reasonable price. But I also got pushed a little bit because of that. And I have a few things right now that still need to be done. They're going to come back, but they're out of town doing another commercial job at one of the mines that they have to do. And I'm mostly done and I'm living here again. So for me, and the longer I put it off, the longer I hold on to my last $10,000. All right. <laughs> so you hold on to that money and let's jump to the picture that's behind me for the anybody yeah. on YouTube. If you're not... I was out showing homes about seven years ago, went into an old uh, potential investment property and ran into the logo that's behind me, which is Youngstown Kitchens, which was a division of Mullins. And the reason that was significant to me, to us, is because our father grew up in Eastern Ohio, near Youngstown. Youngstown Kitchens actually moved its location to Warren, closer to where dad grew up in Bristolville. Mm -hmm. And both my grandfather and my uncle and my father all worked at Youngstown Kitchens, making what was one of the top selling metal kitchen designs of the 19, late 1940s into the late 1950s. 
It was about a 10 to 12 year run is what they figured. Now, it didn't actually close until another 10 years after that, but its heyday was kind of 1947 up to around 58 to 60, depending on what you would see. Was it what you thought, Eric? Like when you went in and you saw this in the house, was it like what you would have envisioned? Or or did be because you and I just talked about metal versus wood. No, this was this was a very, very modest setup. Okay. This, this was nowhere near all of the things that went into Youngstown kitchens or the metal kitchens that you had the design. And it's like, look, we won a that was it was really Youngstown Kitchens that came up with the idea of the work center mm-hmm. and putting in a little desk to make it easier for the housewife to sit and organize her day and write down her grocery and her shopping list. I mean, I watched it. Did you read and did it say her and she? Actually, I did my research on YouTube and you can actually, I'm gonna post a link in this. There is a promotional movie for Youngstown Kitchens called Diana, which was designed to entertain and educate the salespeople for Youngstown Kitchen around the country. It was about a 30 minute training video that had an actress in the vice president of marketing's office come to life, a statue of the goddess Diana, and she went out and did the research. (laughs) I know it sounds so completely, but I, I will. I'll put the link on YouTube. It's going to be in the in the show notes at the end of this episode. Eric, I'm going to find somewhere. I have the salesman's kit of the Youngstown Kitchen that was in. The you still school. have it. I still have it, and I should have gotten it out for this. But maybe we'll do the same thing. Maybe I'll get a picture of it. See, and... Some of it you can't see. I can hold on. I'm going to jump. You're going to jump. I jumped up. Oh, you have one of them. Where did you get that? In a okay. set of blocks that I had. Okay. You, I, you disappeared, by the way. Okay. I know. It, it, yeah. It's some it about these virtual well. backgrounds, but it is one piece that's the, the kitchen sink portion of it. And I had thought about displaying it at my office, putting a shelf in my office and putting it together because it's how the salespeople used to sell. They would go in and you could move the pieces around. And yeah, maybe that's something we can add. Had know, the little grid format that was basically one foot square so they could see exactly yeah. how things were going to fit in a corner and, and a lazy Susan. And the doors. Yep. Yep, yep. 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 So there's that. And then we transitioned and we talked about what a classic 1970s kitchen we moved into with the house that we bought moving from our Main Street house to our Lynn Street house as a family. Dad bought that in 72, did the renovations and the kitchen is one of the most classic 1970s. Every appliance was Harvest Gold. Harvest Gold. And it was the Harvest Gold. And I never understood why they had to make all the corners darker. Oh, I don't know. And and heavier. You know how it had that darker strip down along and then the door kind of lightened up and we had the Harvest Gold sink system Mm -hmm. and the laminate counters that were the same and then wood cabinets. And we talked about just before we started recording. I don't know what necessarily influenced that. I honestly got to think that it was some of coming out of the 1960s and the hippie movement and a swing back towards more natural products. Maybe. It got us away from the metal cabinets. And so kitchens went in with the natural earth tones. We had lots of browns and orange and avocado and the harvest and wood cabinets. And, and that's what our kitchen was, was, right? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting you say that because I always wonder, you know, people say, oh, I'm a trend setter or I'm a trend follower or whatever. And you know that I'm not a huge fan of, you know, I like color and I'm not a huge fan of the black, gray and white that is the, the has been the current thing. Who started that? Some designer somewhere did that, right? And said, this is the new neutral. Right. And then everybody's doing it. And now now blue is kind of hot, right? Different shades of blue are being yep. used. And and having your island be a different than the main part of the kitchen. And, and even a different, different finish to it. It had the big finish. legs on the island as opposed to the, the, the sleek yep. trim out that the rest of the cabinetry has. If yep. you've got white cabinets, you've got the, the dark. They're even, even changing the, the surface on the islands in yeah. some of the houses, the new builds you've got coming in. It's like, well, we're doing quartz every place else, but this is going to be a waterfall granite. Well, and what's funny to me, so I was thinking about the house on Lynn Street because, okay, the house on Main Street before we moved had the metal cabinets and then the, the drainer 
was next to the sink and built right in to the countertop where you would put and water would drain down. So then we moved to Lynn Street and that 1970s kitchen that dad put in, and it was a double sink. It had the garbage disposal side, and then it had the bigger sink, right? And when I was choosing what I wanted, I was, everybody's using the great big farmhouse sinks. Did I want that? Did I still want the garbage, the, you know, the garbage disposal side? And I think I asked you guys on one of our group texts, you know, to my siblings, I remember drying the dishes. I can visually see if we didn't use a dishwasher, how everything sat in that kitchen. Yep. And I remember that we took the dish towel into what was the mudroom and hung it out there over this kind of little mini clothesline thing that was out there. That I don't remember what we did with the dish drainer, but mom was too organized to leave that sit on the counter all the time. No, I, I think she had something that it, it used to hang into, when we got to Main Street, there were hooks on the wall and we'd take the dish drainer and go hang it up on the hooks on the wall just above the washing machine. So, th no, that was Lynn Street. That was not Main. Yeah, excuse me, Lynn Street, not Main Street. Okay, yeah. so that's that's where we put it. And I was like, there's no way because mom was too neat, too organized, you know, and everything to leave it just out. You know, it, it wouldn't have, that wouldn't have happened. So, But the last thing before we move towards yeah. closing this one, yeah, Lynn Street house, we had about a four inch plastic cup. That we right? drink all the time. Everybody used the same cup, sat right next to the sink. Didn't matter who came in. You <laughs> grabbed the cup and you got to drink the water. It was like orange or yellow. From yeah. the tap. Yeah. Dad, at some point he was doing some of that injection molding or a client was. And he got these free plastic cups that. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We got plastic ones when I worked at Terra Tech because we had a plastics department. So we got some there, but I think those, I think those were like Tupperware-ish or something, but <laughs> you're right. We didn't all have our own bottles that were chilling or whatever. Everybody drank out of the tap. And the, the same cup, the same tap, you rinsed out and, and then to make sure it was clean, you turned it on inside after you got a drink and you set it back up there wet. Either we've just all had all the germs and we're fine or, <laughs> but it explained, it explains our Dane Bramage. That was good, Eric. <laughs> I, um, but you know what? Our generation talks at my generation a little bit ahead of yours, but we talk about that a lot. The things that we did, the things that we lived with, the things that were normal. We don't know that they were all safe. Me drinking out of the creek wasn't safe necessarily. You nope, know, so, but I did too. Yeah, you know, and things you don't know, and it may mean that we have Giardia. I don't know. <laughs> yes. But what was normal, even, even when I think about basements, because we don't have basements here, and so we don't talk about radon. But you guys might, and that dad's desk was in the basement, right? So it's just so many differences, and one of them being the kitchen. Sometime we'll have to come back. We'll have to talk a little bit about your kitchen, because you're also into bright color. And yes, yes. Okay, so finish up. You started in June. You ended up, and you can say 95% finished at this point? Yes, there's just a few things that I've noticed that they need to fix I got, you know, I got rollouts this time. I have this cabinet that's got an X like this that I can put like wine bottles in if I want, you know, and stuff. I just have so much more drawer space, which is more popular. And I love that because I can see what I have. And then I have more place to display my wine glasses and things that have been kind of hidden away and my collectibles from around the world. They told me they plan to finish me up in April. And I'm like, that's fine. Let me pay my taxes and then I'll pay you next month. So, All right. But, so what was the... Custom cabinets, new appliances, all white, solid surface countertops. Buy, what, what, was a price, what was a final price tag or an about out you there? You know, I bought the butcher block myself. That was about 900. I bought the um, the backsplash. It's going to be about 2,500 to 3,000. It's an expensive backsplash. And even the guy that's going to put it in looked at me like I was crazy. But <laughs> so I probably will wind up with about a twenty five to $26,000 kitchen but that's a custom built kitchen. And that that's custom built. And what is your room? About a 15 by 15 wall to wall? It's not, no, it's not quite that big. I would say it's about 12 feet across that piece, about 12 feet by 13 or something like that. And so it's- Okay, so I was a little bit yeah. off. I, I had it yeah. a little bit bigger. Yeah, okay. yeah. But it's everything that I am ever gonna need. And if I ever move from here or rent it out, it's a great space. And then I don't have an eat-in kitchen. So the biggest thing for me was getting rid of that trash can that I've had for 40 years and figuring out what to do. Yeah, with that it. was emotional. I know. I know. 
<laughs> All right. Well, we want to thank everyone for listening and joining us as we have reflected and recalled how life in a small village of Lindsay, Ohio, impacted both our lives and careers in real estate. It wasn't just the houses. It's not just the lifestyle. It's a perfect blend of the two, which have carried us forward into our lives and our careers. As we wrap this up, please keep in mind that our goal is to communicate, educate, entertain, and connect with you, our listeners. We're both realtors with Keller Williams, and we are here to help your family find a perfect property to call home and create your own lasting memories. If you're in San Antonio or South Texas, I am available to assist you while Donna is in Tucson, Arizona. If you are across the United States or perhaps even around the world, remember we are both part of extensive networks of real estate professionals and we would be happy to connect you with an amazing realtor where you need it. Remember, it may be simple, it ain't always easy. And until next time, I'm Eric. I'm Donna. And, and we, we are, are Real, real siblings. siblings. Thanks everybody. Right. Thank you. Every time I think about the places I have known I realize that times have changed So I'll do what I can To make this house into a home Yeah, yeah I'm Annabelle, and I want to thank you for investing your valuable time in listening to Real Sibling. It ain't easy. I hope you found this episode informative and enjoyable. There are several ways you can support this podcast with my grandpa Eric and Aunt Grandma. Please take the time to like, follow, and subscribe. Additionally, leave them a five-star rating along with a review on your preferred podcast platform. The final thing I would ask is that you recommend this podcast to a friend, a family member, or an associate. Your engagement is critical to their ongoing success, and they look forward to connecting. Check out the show notes Grandpa put together with their contact information, including emails, phone numbers, and websites. And remember, the real siblings look forward to hearing from you.